Hey guys, I'm Michael Wright from Unfiltered Gamer, and today we're going to be discussing Heroes of Karth Deathmatch. Specifically, how to set up a deck, so deck construction, as well as booster packs, the Alliance cards, or Alliance booster packs. We're going to discuss what you can get inside of a booster pack, how to deck construct, as well as how to um, facilitate all the different rules involved with construction and land packs as well. Well, let's go ahead and get into it, and then discuss the good guys, the Alliance cards. So let's begin talking about deck building for Heroes of Karth Deathmatch. The first thing you need to know is that every deck can only have 100 gold value points to it. And to determine what value is, you're going to look at the card, and in the bottom left-hand corner of the card is going to be a brown sack, and that is going to illustrate how many points it's worth. You can have a total of 100 points, some cards are worth zero, others are worth more. The next thing you need to know is that there are two heroes per deck. You can include two heroes, and those are pretty uh, much illustrated. You can determine them by the what they say on the card specifically, as well as the fact that you can have a total of 45 cards in your deck. That does not include tokens, however. There also follows a 10-10-10 rule. As you know, there are three types of cards in Heroes of Karth Deathmatch that are followed in decks, and that is going to be the spells, the treasure, and the barracks deck. You have to have at least 10 of each of those decks, so 10 cards in each of those decks, and a total of 45 cards overall. You can only have three of the same type of card, much like other games that have a certain amount of maybe four or two. This game is three of each card. However, that is not including tokens or terrain cards. You can include uh, factions that are allied to each other, so any allies cards can go with each other. However, factions alone do not mix. You can't mix two of this, uh, two different types of factions and allies can mix as much as they would like. Neutrals can be added to any deck, as well as mercenaries. They do not count towards either one. And another thing to note is terrain value and how to set that up as well. You get a total of 16 terrain cards you can use. Five of them have to be spawners, and no more than three of them uh, can be movement and pairing. So you can only have three movement and pairing terrain cards or less. Also, you have to check to see on all the cards the value of them, because they all have to be 100, uh, under 100 points together for those 45 cards. And even the tokens can potentially have uh, some value on them as well. So that is the basic idea for deck construction. You'll have three total decks, including a terrain deck, and then a side pile of tokens that could or may or may not include the value of cards. That's the basic idea for how to set up a deck for Heroes of Karth. You can choose to use the Bane starter deck if you'd like, or create your own, and that will work either way as well as mix and matching. Let's go ahead and show you what you'll get in the different starter decks as well as the terrain pack. So now we've come down to the contents of what you'll get depending on what you're going to purchase. We'll go ahead and talk about these individually, and these will come up and discuss individually as well, depending on which video you're watching. All right, so let's go ahead and show a basic deck. This is a starter deck you'd be getting, and it ranges from about $15 to $17 on GameCrafter. It depends on your region, I think. You're going to get in a starter deck, you're going to receive 16 terrain cards and 45 car deck, including any tokens that deck might need. So as you can see here, this deck is going to come with all of these tokens as well. In each of the decks, you're going to be receiving the barracks cards, quite a lot of them, let's see how far, and then you're going to get your spell book cards, and then you're going to get your treasury cards here. The base decks are going to be different for each. Uh, each train, uh, train, land cards, whatever, are going to be different for each deck you buy. And these are the ones for this one specifically. And they have their own unique different lands for each deck as well, which is kind of nice. The tokens will also be representative of the deck. And then in the barracks, you're also going to get some heroes as well. So just like any other starter deck, you're going to see some really cool ones, and they have their own unique names on them. This one here, you've got Lian Ehrlich, and this one here is Medieva Tan, and then this is an Elf Lord. So I think it's, here's the two heroes right here per deck. So this is what you're mainly going to be getting for each starter deck, and it's going to come with everything one player needs. However, if you want any of these tokens here or the dice, that's separate, or if you'd like, you can also choose to take out your tablet or your mobile device, Let's see if I can, ooh, I'm showing you my password, M for Michael. And then you can go ahead and start using this if you'd like, and you don't need any of the dice or anything. All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and discuss a terrain pack, and it'll come in a bag that's either green or purple, and you can go ahead and take this out, and it was it's gonna come with eight grasslands, it'll come with five spawners you need for the game, three mana pools, three treasures, two teleporters, two forests, and two water, which is pretty much everything they have in the game for terrain, and that'll be 
basically give you enough to mix and match whatever you want in your terrain pack. The water is going to be, uh, it's going to uh, halt movement for flying creatures. Um, and okay, so flying creatures, undead, and jump not affected by this. Everything else is affected by water, so that halts movement. The forest is going to stop everything from attacking, line of sight, that kind of stuff when it comes to druids and rangers. The teleporters move you. Whenever people stop on the treasury spots, that's going to gain them uh, treasure. And then you got lesser mana pool, which makes things easier to cast. Spawners, which you probably already know about. And the grassland, which is basic free movement terrain. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about what would be in a booster pack now or a shard pack, the uh, shard or an alliance pack. First of all, you get for it's roughly like, I think it's like five to seven dollars and it's 18 cards. You're going to get a box. You're going to get one hero card or a level five, four card. You're going to get uh, five tokens, gold or mana cards, seven commons, four uncommons, and one rare card in each of these packs. This is probably the biggest booster packs I've seen with the most variety, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and go up and discuss the Alliance cards. All right, now the moment you've all been waiting for, the Alliance card booster pack. And like I said before, it's 18 cards from five to eight bucks on the Game Crafter, depending on region. You're gonna get a rare, a hero, or a level four card. You got seven commons, four uncommons, and then five gold token or uh, mana cards, or spell cards, I would imagine. When, when you open these packs up, you're simply going to turn over the backside like that, pop it open nice and easy, and it is reusable, which is cool, and flip and flip. And you can go and set aside, and this is going to be your pack of cards right here. In it, you're going to have something really cool, and that's going to be hopefully a named hero like I got right here. Very, very powerful card indeed. Now, in the pack of alliance cards, you're going to get specific types of creatures or monsters or beings, and they're going to mainly be humanoid more than likely. You've got like the elves and the moon warrior type creatures. You've got the knights and anybody, the archers, mages, these kind of guys that are going to be more on the humanoid side or the elven side is what you're going to mainly find in the alliance pack. If you want to fight for what is right, true, and good. This is definitely the pack for you because it's going to increase your ability to get better and better. You've got like ranger decks here. You can add and manipulate the cards in them and change up the deck. And like I was saying before, the bottom left-hand corner tells you how many uh, levels or many uh, coin values it's worth. And you can insert that into your own deck that you would get like a starter deck. I think I would recommend a starter deck that is in a, of course, the Alliance starter deck along with an Alliance booster pack or two to mix it up so you can kind of increase your your uh, playability with the deck and make it even stronger than it normally is. Like most games, the starter deck is going to come with the basic requirements, and the two starter decks to, uh, competing against each other is going to be pretty pretty balanced back and forth, and you never know what's going to happen. But being able to add these extra cards to the deck is going to give you a lot more flavor, and especially if you enjoy the different types of heroes. Uh, you can only have two of them in your deck, but you can change them out however you want throughout your games, as well as you got the uncommons and commons. And realistically, they all work really well, and all these cards are wonderful. So if you like the good side, the light side, the true side, the alliance side, you should definitely check out. Here's a card deathmatch, the uh, alliance card or sh alliance card booster pack. So there you have it, the Shard or Alliance Booster Pack, depending on which video you're watching. And as you can see, here they are. Now, the question really is, are you good or are you bad? Which side would you choose, Shard or Alliance?